Hi, my name is Callie Chappelle, and welcome to this video about the formation of a ternary complex with EFT, amino acyl tRNA, and GDP. This video is made for MCDB 427, which is molecular biology at the University of Michigan. Before we jump into this particular data, I want to give you an overview of the elongation of translation, and in particular, the step that we are interested in. Now, here's a quick disclaimer that the level in which I'm going to explain to you here is not, uh, is not elucidated completely by the data that I'm about to present to you. Rather, what I'm trying to do is give you an, a framework for which you can put this data into your understanding. So the first thing that happens with, in elongation of translation is coupling between EFTU and GDP. Then amino acyl tRNA comes into the complex to form this ternary complex. This is the complex that we're interested in wondering if it actually forms using this experiment. Okay, so the ternary complex includes GDP, amino acyl tRNA, and EFT, and specifically EFTU. After that, this associates with the 70S ribosomal, uh, ribosomal complex to form a, this complex here. Um, then GTP is hydrolyzed, uh, EFTU leaves, and then EFTS regenerates um, GTP EFTU complex. After that, this goes to peptidyl transfer, um, and that's the next step in the elongation of translation. Now, one thing that's really important also to note is that in this experiment, the researchers actually didn't distinguish between EFTU and EFTS, even though now we know they're two separate proteins. Instead, they just called them EFT. So we cannot make conclusions about EFTU and EFTS separately from this experiment. All we can conclude is something about EFT, which is the combination of these two, which, uh, of these two proteins. So what did these experimenters do? The big idea is that if we add everything together and we see if together you get something that's even bigger, then we form a ternary complex or we form a complex from the things that we're putting together. So what are we putting together? Well, first we're going to add label GDP, and we actually have two different uh, GDP labels. The first is the um, is a gamma 32 phos phosphate or phosphorus, which is right here, and the next one is tritium, which is labeled on the ring. Uh, now, why do we do this? Well, keep, we want to ask a question about hydrolysis. So if GDP, this is a picture of GDP, gets hydrolyzed, we lose this gamma, phos we lose this gamma phosphate. Um, so this label would come off and it would no longer be part of the ternary complex if hydrolysis was necessary for the formation of a ternary complex. Then we also add labeled feed tRNA feed, that's labeled with 14C. And finally, we add EFT, which remember includes both EFTU and EFTS. Once we want to mix this stuff together and see if it forms a ternary complex. Then we'll, we'll use gel filtration to separate by sides. So if a ternary complex forms, we should see some kind of big thing in one of the fractions. And then we'll detect the rate activity in each of the fractions. So let's talk about gel filtration chromatography and see what we remember. So in gel filtration, filtration chromatography, we want to separate stuff by size. So we have a bunch of beads, and in these beads, you've got a bunch of little crevices. So what happens? is big stuff will easily move through the gel filtration chrom chromatography column, so, so a big thing like this, because it'll just go around all of these beads and it'll come out the bottom relatively quickly. But if we have something that's really, really tiny, I'm going to draw here in green, what happens is it, has, it actually goes through the inside of all these beads and it has a much longer path to getting out the bottom. Therefore, it takes much longer for it to come out, right, because it has to weave through all of these, the tiny crevices in the beads, all right, so like, for example, if it was coming in here, I might have to go all the way through here, instead of if it was a big thing, it would just simply go around. Um, I, I thought a really great example of understanding gel filtr filtration chromatography was, um, this was brought up by my GSI, actually, in this class, is that game of Plinko, where there are a bunch of, there, we have like a box that's standing upright like this, and there's a bunch of pegs inside of that box. Shout out to Justin Randall for this great analogy. And and along the sides, there's just empty space. There's just empty space here. But in the middle, we've got a bunch of pegs. And so what happens is what you do is you randomly put a bunch of balls in the top here. And they're all they're all relatively big balls, but they're small enough to fit within the pegs. So if you're lucky, your ball will go straight down the sides and quickly come out the bottom, but if your ball goes in the middle, it has to bounce around between all these pegs, and it takes much longer, and the first person to get the ball down at the bottom wins. So just like that, the big stuff, if it can go just around everything, comes out quickly, and the small stuff, if it has to go through all the little crevices, comes out much more slowly. So when we have fractions, we're going to be collecting what comes out of this column in fractions. Early fractions will contain the larger things, and, small, and uh, the later fractions will contain all the small things.
Now that we understand gel filtration chromatography, oh, in, in the context of a ternary complex, a ternary complex, because it has, it, it, it combines these three things, GDP, phenylalanine, TRNA, phenylalanine, and EFT, we would expect that to be big, bigger than each of their constituent parts. Now let's take a look at what the data is. So here's a picture of the data, and I just want to point out a couple of key things. The first thing is what's shown, what these, exper what these experimenters show, and what the textbook shows is just this part of the graph. It's just this. But I wanted to show you, if they had extended out their fraction a little bit longer, what you would have seen. So here are the results. On the y-axis, we have the concentration of the radioactive substance in picomoles per mil. And in the x-axis, we have fractions, where small fraction numbers represent big stuff, and large fraction numbers represent small stuff coming off the column. Um, and, and so this is what we see. So we see kind of two dual peaks happening here with both 32p GDP um, and tritiated GDP, as well as this 14 labeled phenylalanine, T, um, phenylalanine, phenylalanine, TRNA, phenylalanine. And this represents the ternary complex. So we're seeing a big thing coming off the column relatively early, and it contains both GDP and phenylalanine, T, phenylalanine, and assumably EFG is also incorporated into this ternary complex in order for it to be a bigger thing than just the phenylalanine, T, phenylalanine by itself. Um, so this is a big thing, way bigger than any individual things are migrating alone, so we conclude that this is a ternary complex. And I've tried to show you what this means in terms of fraction numbers, where we kind of have a high concentration of each of these things, of the radioactive things, in, in the area around where this ternary complex is forming. And we see a little bump uh, later in phenylalanine, TRNA phenylalanine. This is just free phenylalanine, T phenylalanine. And if they had continued on this graph, we'd see free GDP uh, coming up in a later fraction too, because that's pretty small. So what can we conclude from this data? Well, this data shows that GDP, both labels, and some phenylalanine, T phenylalanine, co-migrate, and that they co-migrate larger than what you'd expect for just phenylalanine bound to GDP. So this must be a ternary complex, and both GDP and phenylalanine, TRNA, are in this complex. Also, you can conclude that GDP in this complex, there at least is some GDP in this complex as represented by this that's not hydrolyzed because the 30 GP label is still retained at a relatively high concentration. But you cannot conclude that GDP isn't also involved in this complex uh, just because non-hydrolyzed GDP is in the complex. Sorry about that notification. It's actually funny because when I was looking up, I wanted to double check the structure for um, GDP and instead of getting Instead of getting GTP, I kept getting green um, green tree python pictures instead of this. Um, so yeah, just so you know that. But anyway, getting back to the conclusion here, the data shows that GDP, both labels, and some phenylalanine, T, -phenyl T phenylalanine co-migrate, and they co-migrate in a larger thing that indicates that it's probably a ternary complex. Finally, you cannot conclude that GDP is not in the complex, just that non-hydrolyzed GTP must be in the complex. I hope this video was helpful for you, and take care.